And King Herod heard of him. Speaking of Jesus, him. For his name was spread abroad. That I like. His name is spread abroad. And we should be doing the same. Spreading the name of Jesus all around us. And let's spread it throughout the whole earth, as a matter of fact. And so, um, now, who is this King Herod? Actually, uh, if you go into real study here, especially with the historian that I've talked about before, his name was Josephus, who lived in that century, time of Jesus, or actually a little bit later. Well, kind of paralleled. It says King Herod. Well, really, um, Mark mentions him as a king uh, because I think they thought him as a king in Galilee. See, he was actually over two spots, um, this particular Herod. There's four Herods in the New Testament. Herod the Great, which is a guy who tried to kill Jesus when he was a little kid, little baby. And Herod Antipas. There's another one named Herod Philip. They're all Herod, Herod, Herod. I don't think Herod is actually the name of these guys. It's a title. Um, and it really means hero-like. If you think about the word Herod, H-E-R-O-D, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, which I don't think it does, but I think it's a coincidence. If you take the D off, you've got hero. <laughs> but these Herods, this Herodian dynasty, this uh, group of um, men, ugh, evil, sly, slick, sneaky, selfish, they were really bad, really bad people. As a matter of fact, Jesus called this Herod right here. He said, go tell that fox. A fox is sly and slick. <laughs> All right, cunning. Not good. These guys weren't good. But uh, this guy, this particular one, was one of the sons, and I'm going to show you which one after in a little bit, of Herod the Great. He was like the father of him. And this guy had, see if I can draw a really quick uh, uh, map of, of this uh, of the land here, the, of Israel and all. You've got the land, you've got the Great Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. And then you have the Sea of Galilee over here, goes like this. Then the River Jordan goes up. You've seen me, if you've been watching for a while, many times, the squiggly line of Jordan River. And then you come down here and then you go out and then you go over and then you go like this, something like that. The Dead Sea was what it was called at that time, in the time of Jesus. And the Old Testament was called um, the Sea of Salt, the Salt Sea. All right, then, um, so you got this lamb. Now, Herod the Great uh, gave, he, at first he was going to give a lot of the land to, or when he died to, well, let's say it this way. He changed his mind. I'm not sure exactly what he was going to do with it, but he, he divided up uh, uh, like among several of his sons. And they probably all didn't like that. They'd rather be the one. That's so selfish. Anyway, and he became what's known as Tetrarch. Tetrarch. Um, if I spelled it as T-E-T-R-A, Tetrarch, like arc means over. And then, uh, and this has to do with fourth. So he had a fourth of the areas. Archelaus had most of it, and then and then he was gone, and Tetrarch, and then, well, part of it was uh, Archelaus, one was Philip, one was um, of uh, this guy, and his name is Antipas. You know, so Herodias, Herodias. So he got this area, which we're very familiar with, Galilee, and he got this area, pretty far down here, probably even lower, which is called Perea. He got this area. This and this became the land or the uh, regions that he was in control of. And he tried to think himself as a king. He wanted to be a king. And um, he wasn't the king. But he was known as a king, the ruler in that area. So Mark calls him the king. And King Herod heard of him, heard of Jesus, for his name was spread abroad, which is good. And I think it's especially after these stories when, remember, the apostles were let out and news spread more and more because you've got Jesus working now through 12 apostles, the power of God, people getting healed, the message. 
he became more and more popular. And so news spread because of them and also because of what Jesus was doing, of course. And so Herod, Herod Antipas knew of Yeshua, that he knew of Jesus, but he didn't know who he was. Now in the next videos coming up here, I'll go into a little bit more, but I'd like to just give you a background. I think it's interesting. I think you'll enjoy it, I hope. Um, the background of who is Antipas. Now, we know a lot more about his dad, Herod the Great. And he died in 4 BC. Uh, I'm not going to go into all that, but he died in 4 BC. And that's when the, uh, the division happened. You know, the Tetrarch, the parts. I, I know three of them went to different ones. I can't think of who the other person was. Four parts. Antipas, as we're going to talk about. And Antipas, became, right here at this arrow... At 4 BC, when his dad died, that's when he uh, got part of the uh, a portion of the land where he started controlling. He wasn't ruling everything in Israel and all. And he uh, uh, ruled all these years, 43 years he ruled as a tetrarch. And he would have ruled more until um, at 39 AD. And by the way, BC means, you guys know what that is? BC means before Christ. And then A.D., a lot of people, and I used to think it way back, I used to think it was after death. That's not correct. Because the death of Jesus happened here, and all of this is A.D., so it wasn't after death. It's Anno Domini, which means year of the dominion, year of the Lord, of our Lord. And that's talking about his birth, which happened back in here. But anyway, we're not going to go. There's an overlap here. Anyway, this is A.D., and at 39, he... His, his wife, who he married, which is, ugh, she was horrible, <laughs> wicked. Ooh, she was terrible, snake-like, witch-like, ugh. Um, and we'll get into that story coming up here. You're going to get a glimpse of what these characters are like. It was really terrible. It was, all right, but anyway, I could go on and on. But what happened is uh, she wanted him to become king. As a matter of fact, she married, she divorced, we'll find out later, with Philip, his brother, to get him, Herod uh, Antipas, who had more land and all. She wanted power. She wanted to be the queen and all that. So uh, she wanted him to be named king. So she sent him to Rome and Caligula in 39 AD, the emperor, the real king of the area, was kind of very upset about that and said, you know what, forget it. And he kicked him out and he no longer had, was a tetrarch and he put him out and his wife, Herodias, and, and banished them. And they lost everything. They just lived their lives out in seclusion and no position, no power, no popularity. Down. You reap what you sow uh, eventually unless God gives mercy. Oh, I wish some of these guys would have come and surrendered their lives to Jesus. All right, but anyway, the, this, this, is, this is Antipas. Let me tell you a few more things about him, which I think you'll enjoy, I hope. I, I'm like interested in all the details. Like when I read this, the Bible here, I love reading it, and then I go, well, what does that mean? What is that? What is that? And I go into what the Bible actually says, the meaning of the words, like Greek and Hebrew, and then I also like to uh, find out who is the Antipas, so I go into other sorts of his history. And I love, by the way, all the history from the writings of other people during these periods, during this time, lines up. They don't contradict what this, this says. So the Bible has been lined up over and over, showing it's not just a make-believe fairy tale story, that's actual history. That's different than a lot of the other religions. And so it's very cool. All right, Herod Antipas. Ah, and son of a hero is another meaning of Herod, or hero-like, no heroes. They weren't very good at all. Uh, maybe they were the ones. I haven't found out yet. How did he get those titles? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, he was a son of Maltus. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take a second and give you an actual sort of a family tree of these guys. And I'm going to go through these points. I, I, please listen. Please finish. It's not boring, hopefully, to you. But it, it is pretty fascinating. Uh, let's go into this. All right. I did a study of this years and years ago, and I thought I'd share it with you a little bit. So um, I'm not going to, I don't know much, much about hardly any of these guys. I know a little bit, I know a lot about Herod the Great. I know pr some about his favorite wife. Uh, he had 10 wives. 
<laughs> That's way too many. God set it up as yeah, Adam and Eve, not a bunch of wives. So people in that day and some lands today do more than one wife. Not God's will, by the way. Antipas the first. When you see this one or two or and all that, that means it's the first one. Um, if you go back here, Antipas was a great was a grandfather, the great grandfather of Antipas uh, later, and he was named after him. And uh, we have Antipas the first, who had Antipater the second, and also Joseph the first. And by the way, they they weren't Jewish people. It was sort of a half Jew. They came from a a lineage from way back of Idumea, which, by the way. Idumea, I'll show you this as I have this map. This is getting kind of complicated here. I got these boards here. Idumea is down here in this region in Israel, like down here underneath the uh, uh, Dead Sea down here. And that's where Herod the Great, the, all the Herods came from that land, you know, from way down there. It's, oh, I've read a lot about this, but let's just go on. It's really interesting. All right, here we go. So where did Herod the Great and Antipas come from? Antipas had Antipater. And Joseph, Antipater had Herod the Great. He was the second son of Antipater. Uh, Phasael the first uh, was the first one. The second son was Herod the Great. And he become, he, I don't know if he called himself great. He really wasn't great. Herod the Great, maybe he was insecure. Uh, definitely insecure. He was like, he was, he was four feet, 10 inches. You know how small that is? As far as I've read and understood, extremely large guy, like way bloated out there, big. Um, and he had diseases later in his life. Ugh, he's a mess. He killed a ton of people. He had a lot of people killed, like 200 people just like that. Uh, the Jewish people do raise up, raise up in power. He's very manipulative. He, he's very s evil smart. You know, he, a mind that was evil, but really, he really worked through all sorts of difficulties. All right, I'm going back, back in Herod the Great. Let's, look, let's go on. Herod the Great had uh, 12, 10 wives, Doris, Miriam. That was his favorite wife who actually he killed her because he felt like she was about to try and take him out so that her son, Aristobulus, you know, uh, Aristobulus is down there, would be the, um, you know, king. I mean, he had her killed and then he tried to kill himself because he loved her. It's a real weird thing. Really intrigue, really weird stories and strange and interesting. So uh, Miriam the first, Miriam the second, Maltese, Cleo Cleopatra, not the queen, Pallas, uh, Ph Phaedra, Elpis, and then these last two uh, wives, no names. We don't know what those names are, at least far, as far as I know at this point. And then uh, right here, the fourth wife, Maltese, if I'm saying that correct, um, this was a Samaritan. This is Jewish, Jewish, Samaritan. I mean, uh, yeah, Samaritan. He married a Samaritan, the good, you know, in between Galilee and Judea. Uh, Herod the Great married this woman who had Archelaus, who became the king after he died, and, and, and the Bible mentions him. Like Joseph was afraid that he was going to kill because Herod the Great tr tried to kill Jesus. He felt like he was going to, and warned in a dream, he went up to Galilee, if you know that story from Matthew I talked about. But anyway, and then here it is. Do you see this guy? Antipas, the second. He was uh, Antipas right here. And so going back to Miriam, by the way, or Miriam the first, she had Alexander the first and then Aristobulus, who um, actually had a daughter named Herodias. Now Herodias is the one that ends up marrying Antipas, her uncle. <laughs> This gets really weird, doesn't it? Can you imagine Mary and your uncle? <laughs> that was Philip's niece. Philip, I think it's Philip the second, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe Philip the first. Yeah, Philip the first. See the arrow down here? Marries his niece. And then she divorces him so that she could marry the other uncle. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> and by the way, Philip and, and Herodias had a, a, a young lady named, a girl named Salome, which we're going to get into in the next story coming up here. Ugh. <laughs> Just get ready for this. It's like really crazy. Um, so that's how that works. I thought I'd give you an interesting lesson on who these guys were. 
And let's talk a little bit more about Antipas, what we know. We know more, like I said, about Harry the Great, a lot more. Josephus told a lot about him. And um, so, you ready? <laughs> Here we go. He was a son of Maltese, like I just said, the Samaritan. He was raised and educated in Rome, the capital of the empire, way up in Italy. He, was, he had some sort of Jewish and religious practice. He was observant Jew. So he had Jewish background, sort of, and religious, but it was mixed, I think. He had some really bad stuff in there, too. All right, then he, he, one thing about his coins from him is he was careful not to offend or cause problems with the Jews. His coins are, there are coins they found with Antipas. And he, I don't, maybe he didn't do image of himself and all that. I'm not sure yet, but it's interesting. He, he tried to please the Jews, just like Herod the Great tried to please the Jews in some ways. In other ways, not at all. As a matter of fact, here's what he did. Um, even though he didn't, he was careful about his coins because images, you don't want to put an image there. They don't like images like you're, you make no image of God and don't make image of people and all like your, your show off and all. However, um, there's some things he did, things that really offended the Jews and they didn't like it. He married Herodias and the law of God teaches against that. And you know, Philip was still living. He di she divorced him to get to Antipas. Are you getting all this? <laughs> this is crazy. And she she married. He married her. Antipas. I mean, he she. Yeah. Did I do that right? Did I say that right? I might have said it wrong. She divorced Philip to marry Antipas, and and that was unlawful according to the Bible and all, and unlawful to the Jewish sensibilities. You know the feelings of Jews. And John the Baptist preached against that. We'll get in that later. He, he preached against that marriage, and that's what put him in prison. But he, he spoke up for what was right. Uh, so he married Herodias, his brother's wife, his brother's wife, while he's still living. Um, he built the capital. This is another bad thing. These are all bad things right here. He built the capital, Tiberius, on a burial ground. Let me do that real quick. I think it'll be interesting for you to see this while I'm at it. Let's go back to our map here. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, right here, I'm going to, right here in Galilee, I'll go see if I can erase some of this. All right, see if you can see the, here's the Sea of Galilee right here. Right here, right about here, I'll make it kind of big, it wasn't that big, that dot on Galilee. He built a new capital. The capital of Galilee used to be right here, Sephor, Sephorus. Built that up, put walls about it, had a theater there of acting and all that. And then right there, he changed it in 20 AD. Remember the AD part? He, he built Tiberius and built a palace there. Um, he also had stuff down here, Macarius and all that way down here. So he had a, build, a lot of building projects, which did, they didn't like that either. Because, well, I'll show you in a second. He taxed the people, got a lot of money, like Herod the Great did, to build, have all these building projects. But anyway, here's what happened. He built that Tiberius, and by the way, the, word, the name Tiberius was in honor of the emperor of Rome. And he also did another one built for Libya, you know, one of the daughters of Ro Roman emperors and all that, or his wife, Augustus' wife. So he was trying to please them by putting the name of the cities in their name. So he built that. He built the capital on a, uh oh, get ready, a burial ground. Can you see that right there? A burial ground. He built the capital right over tombs, like built a city on, on a graveyard, a cemetery. Now, to Jewish people and other cultures, very holy, very sacred. You honor the dead and all that. That did not please the Jewish people. By the way, it never has in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, never has Jesus visiting Tiberius. Maybe in honor of the Jewish people because he was a Jewish person. Um, he may have went there to share the Gospel anyway, but it's never recorded that way. And I tend to think he never went there. Hmm. And so, um, right here, he built the capital on a burial ground on the tombs. He decorated his palace with animal pictures and images and representations. Ugh. You know, a bunch of animal things. That, that really bothered them, images. 
Another thing they didn't like is major taxes for his building projects. You know, he had a lot of building projects. Not as much as Herod the Great, his dad. The one thing that was great, I've said this before about Herod, Herod the Great, I don't know about this tetrarch, was Herod the Great was a genius when it came to building things. Wow. And he built 30 different things all over, like scattered, I don't have my map, but all over the place, outside of Israel, inside especially. Oh, it's pretty amazing. And he was a tetrarch, like I said, of Galilee and Perea. There's uh, some more stuff about him, but I, I, you know, I don't think it's as interesting. Uh, but I think that gives you an idea. Now when you read it, because it doesn't say Antipas at all here, you have to kind of find that in outside resources, extra, extra biblical. It says, what does it say? Oh, yeah. Um, wait, no, no. Here. Oh. And King Herod, that's Atipus, heard of Jesus. That's a good thing. For his name was spread abroad. And he said, and then he starts saying things about Jesus that's like, no, he got it wrong. And I'm not going to go into that until probably the next video. Definitely not now. Hope you got something out of that. Now, now we kind of get a feel for this guy named Antipas. And hopefully you enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing with you. God bless you.